Welcome to LHA Church. You're about to hear another inspirational message from Pastor Jerry Galloway, lead pastor here at Lighthouse Assembly. It's our prayer that this message is an encouragement and blessing to your life. Mark chapter number 12. Last week we talked about Jesus' words concerning the greatest commandment. The uh, teachers of the law had come and they said, uh, Jesus, you have been answering the scribes, you've been answering the Herodians uh, with very good answers, um, but we have this one question for you. What is the greatest commandment? Jesus answers him by saying, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord, your God, with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. And then he continues this discourse into verse 31. Look there with me, Mark 12. And 31, he says, the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Now, if you'll turn with me to John, the 13th chapter, it is here in John 13, we're going to spend our time together and you can leave your Bibles open this morning if you'd like, because we're just going to walk through this passage together and spend some time looking into this together. John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Love is the greatest of Christian graces. Love is the highest of Christian aspirations. Love is powerful. Love is strong. Love can break through barriers and change the outcome of a life. Love. It's the greatest of spiritual giftings. Greater than speaking in tongues greater than speaking prophecy, greater than gifts of faith. Paul's words in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 13, the greatest of these is love. Love is the highest expression of God to man. His love sent Jesus Christ, his one and only son, to be the remedy for our sin. Friend, there may be things that you don't know about God. Maybe there are some things that you don't quite understand about God. But friend, you cannot know God without knowing his love for you. The source of all love begins with God. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 7. Dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. If love is the highest expression of God to man, so it must be the highest expression of man's relationship to his fellow man. If you never accomplish anything else in this life, may it be said of you that you loved others. You see, this is the trait, my friend, that should identify us the most. Not that we go to church, though that's important. Not that we profess Christ, though that's important, but that we love one another. This is the great aspiration. Love becomes visible in us, not through a change of our mind, not through a change of our action, not through a change of our will, but love becomes visible in us rather by a change of the heart. Only the changed in heart through Christ can love as God loves If you strive to champion the work of Christ, if you strive to champion in your faith, then love must be paramount in your life. If our church is going to champion the cause of the work of Jesus Christ throughout our community, then friends, love must be our highest priority. Let's walk together through this passage here in John 13 this morning. You'll find, first of all, he says to his disciples, a new command I'm giving you. Love one another. 
Now, this new command is not a doing away with the older command. It's not replacing something else they had been taught. For you see, Jesus is just hours away from his crucifixion. He's near the end of his earthly ministry, and he is reminding them of their priority, love one another. He said, I have a new command for you. Love one another as I have loved you. You see, he had been loving them. He had been showing them his love. He had been caring for them, protecting them, vindicating them, taking care of them, meeting their needs, walking with them, teaching them, guiding them, providing for them. He had loved them to the very end, the word says. But he says, now I've got a new command because I'm getting ready to leave. I'm getting ready to go back to my father, and you're going to be left here. He says the new command is not the love necessarily. Now it's going to be changing. It's not what I'm doing for you. Now it's time for you to begin loving one another the way I've been loving you. He says, you've seen me love you. You've seen the ways I've expressed that love. You've seen the ways that I have loved you with all that I have. He says, now it's your turn. Now the new command, you're to begin loving one another. Loving one another. Yes, they were still yet to love the world. They were to love the helpless, the sick, the poor, the abused, the discarded, the abandoned. But he says, I want you to love one another. How powerful it is, friend, when the church loves. Yes, we too are to love those in the world. Our neighbors, our co-workers, our friends, and our family. But you see, he's trying to bring us up to another level. He's trying to cause us to do something that's just not ordinary. He's talking about the church loving the church. You see, when the church loves, it becomes an unstoppable force. When the church loves, barriers, hurdles, and pitfalls are overcome. When the church loves, the world sees something in the church they can't find anywhere else. The church becomes a mighty, unstoppable, powerful force when it loves. When we love those in the church, fighting, bickering, self-importance, and ego are defeated. When we love those in the church, gossip, backbiting, slandering, judgmental attitudes are all buried at the foot of the cross. When we love those in the church, we're no longer known by our differences, but rather we're known by the unity and the love of Jesus Christ in the body of believers. When we love those in the church, unity identifies us. When we love those in the church, others become more important than self. Serving becomes more important than being served. Giving is more important than being given to. Helping over being helped. And we love those that are in the body of Christ like we've never loved them before. When we love those in the church, conversations about others that tear down, hurt, and discouraged are silent. When we love those in the church, pride, arrogance, and judgmental attitudes are abased. And we find undeniable truths being this one, love never fails. When we love those in the church, human nature is ruled by the Spirit of Christ. When we love those in the church, words that hurt, destroy, and wound the Spirit are traded for words that build up, edify, encourage, strengthen, exhort, Give good, uh, gr- give good greetings and build up one another. We trade off the old deadly words and we start speaking words of life. We start speaking words that says you're going to make it. We start speaking words that says you're not going out, but you're going up. We start speaking words that says your best days are ahead of you and not behind you. We don't speak words that tear down, but we speak words that edify. When we love those in the church, Unity strengthens us, and the church becomes a light in the darkness. A city set on a hill that cannot be hidden as it becomes obvious to the world, listen to me, that God is among us. Love is the highest expression of God to man, so it must be the highest expression of our relationship with our fellow man. Look at verse 34. 
he continues on and he says, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Well, if you're like me, my mind begins to say, well, how did he love us? If we're to love the way that he loved, how did he do it? We find in the word that Christ loved sacrificially as he gave his life for us. Isaiah 53 and verse 5 says, but he was pierced for our rebellion. He was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. How powerfully he has loved us. How far reaching his love had stretched to reach down to us. The places he's gone to find us. The relentless nature of his love to pursue us. And the powerful grip of his love to not let us go. How unconditionally, unselfishly he has loved us. In his love, he's protected us. He's provided for us. He's kept us. He's fed us. He's clothed us. He's guided us. He's cared for us. He's been with us in the lonely times. He's been with us in the night time. He's been with us when everybody else left. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you all the way to the end. When everybody else gave up, he never gave up. He's always been faithful. Friend, that's how he's loved us. How did Christ love the disciples? He spoke kindly to them. He took their concerns as his own. He cared for their well-being. He instructed. He counseled. He comforted. He prayed with them and for them. He vindicated them when they were accused. I'm going to stop right there. I felt prompted in the first service to stop there, and I didn't. So I'm getting my chance. I'm going to do it now. When you hear somebody accuse a brother or sister in Christ, you need to stand up for your brother or sister in Christ. When you hear somebody talking negative and down and about somebody, saying stuff that's really even not any of their business, you need to stand up for your brother and sister in Christ. You know how to stop gossip? Stand up for the truth. Wow, we got quiet in the house now. <laughs> Stand up for the truth. Love them. He reproved them even. There were times when Jesus would reprove the disciples when they were missed. Listen, this love thing is not just about a, a, a great emotional experience that we all have. Sometimes in love, we have to be reproved. Can you say amen? Amen. There's sometimes we need to be corrected and we need to be instructed and we need to be trained. There's sometimes that we have to pull somebody aside and say, brother, sister, I love you. I'm seeing this going in your life. What's happening in your life? Jesus reproved them when they were amiss, yet he compassionately bore with their feelings. And he always, listen to this, he always brought out the best in them. When you leave your brothers and sisters in church, do you bring the best out in them or the worst? Do you encourage them or discourage them? Do you build them up or do you tear them down? What power do your words have in loving one another? Jesus said this, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. How did he love? Turn in your Bibles if you've got them out still. Turn there to 1 Corinthians 13. If you've been around the church any length of time, you know what this passage is. This is called the love chapter. If you want to know the real definition, now we just came through Valentine's Day, and I gave you guys all your warning. I hope you took the good warning. I tried to help you guys and get you ready, so you're on your own now. But we just came through this time of love and celebrating love, and we often have all these ideas of what love is. In 1 Corinthians 13, what it really does, 1 Corinthians 13, it defines it. It gives us a picture of what love is like. Look at verses 4 through 8. This will show you, friend, how God loves us. Love is patient. Has he ever been patient with you? Love is kind. Has he ever showed his kindness to your life? It says he doesn't envy. It doesn't boast. It's not proud. You know what pride does? Pride makes us, tries to make us look better than everybody else. 
God never does that to us. God's always building us up. It says, love does not dishonor others. That's a big deal, isn't it? It's not self-seeking. It doesn't have to have its own way. It is not easily angered. Aren't you glad that God is great in mercy, slow to anger in our lives? He's slow to anger. Look at this. It keeps no record of wrongs. I'm so glad that God doesn't say, you know what, Jerry, June the 2nd, 1988, you did this, 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 and this. I still remember it all just like it was yesterday. You know, I can say to him, Lord, I'm sorry I did that again. And I think the Lord says to me, what are you talking about? I don't remember you doing anything before because he doesn't see my sin anymore. But when he looks at me, he sees this word, redeemed, redeemed, redeemed. I've been forgiven of my past. I've been forgiven of my sin. I've been forgiven of all my wrong. The Bible says as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects it always trusts, it always hopes, it always perseveres. Love never fails. So if we're to love as Christ loved, right here is the answer for us. How do we do that? We always protect. We always trust. We always hope. We always persevere with them. We are patient with them. We are kind we don't envy when somebody else has something that I don't have. We don't boast to make ourselves look better. We're not prideful. We don't dishonor others. We're not self-seeking. We're not easily angered. We keep no records of wrong. We do not delight in evil, but we always rejoice with the truth. For love never fails. Friends, this is how we're to love in the body of Christ. This is how we are to treat others in the body of Christ. These are the character traits of the body of believers. Notice in verse 35, he continues. He says, by this, everyone will know you are my disciples if you love one another. By this, he said, they will know. It's our witness. It's our reputation. It's our test of authenticity. It's the fruit of our lives that declares Jesus has saved us and the Holy Spirit lives in us. Friend, it's the litmus test. In no other way did he so declare that we would be authenticated than by our love. It's not just about showing. It's about Having it. You see, our love for others in the body of Christ must be free. It must be ready. It must be strenuous. It must be expensive. It must be constant and must be persevering. Our love for others is not to be impotent but powerful. You see, this is the characteristic of God's people. This is what we must excel in. We must champion this cause. If we're to build champions, may it be that we're building champions of love. If we're going to excel at anything, if we're going to be great at doing something, let's be great at loving other people. Let's be great at showing the love of Christ. Let's be great and let's excel. Let's lift his name up as we love one another in the body of Christ. Christ was famous for his love. May we be like him. He was kind, gracious, compassionate, and merciful, and his love never failed. Friend, the greatest witness this church has in our community is our love. The best advertisement we can have in this community is our love. Love Love that's in our hearts, one for another. You see, when it's truly in your heart, you won't have to advertise it. They'll automatically know it. If we love those well in the house, 
then we can more effectively love those outside the house. But we can't say I love them and not love those in the house. You can't say I love the lost but despise your brother at the end of the row. You can't say I love God and despise your brother. You can't say I love God and hate one another. It just doesn't work. You say, yeah, but you don't understand. No, honey, you don't understand. The word of God says you can't say I love God and hate somebody else. Because it's the love of God. Where did love start with? The love is from God. And he's put it in our heart. You can't have God's love in your heart and hate at the same time. Love. A church that loves is a safe place for the broken and the wounded. A church that loves is a safe place for those who have been wounded by others, discarded because others did not see them as important. A church that loves is a haven for those the world has ignored because they didn't look a certain way or act a certain way. The church that loves is an oasis for those who need relief from a hurtful past. The church is an oasis for those who are thirsty for acceptance and unconditional love. The church that loves is a hospital for the broken, the wounded, and the abandoned. It's a place of healing for those who've been cast aside, shunned, and unapproved by the world. No greater place of healing in this world than the church that loves through Jesus Christ. When we love with the same love, he loved us with. Friends, this is our utmost priority. This is our calling. There may be many things that you may do in the body of Christ. You may work in a ministry. You may teach a class. You may lead the ministry. You may usher. You may uh, be a greeter. You may work with the children. You may work with the adults. You may pick up things around the building. You may help on the outside of the building. All those things are wonderful and are needed, but they are secondary to love. Love is our utmost priority. The greatest thing that you and I could do as a church is love. We'll have our greatest impact when we really love. The church, listen to me, the church ought to be a safe haven for people to come into. The last thing, the last thing people need is to come into a church and have somebody arguing with somebody else. Come into the parking lot and somebody's arguing or straightening somebody out in the parking lot. Coming into the lobby of the church and it's their first Sunday. This is not an example, so relax. Coming into the church lobby and they see two believers going at it in the church lobby. They come in. And see a couple of church people standing over in the corner talking. You know one of the things we're blessed with at this church? You'll never find board members standing in a corner talking about other people in the church or the pastor. I'm telling you, these men are men who love. We're blessed. We're blessed. And you know, I'm not, I'm, I want you to hear my heart. I'm not preaching this today to try to straighten out and fix something. That wasn't what Jesus was doing when he did this in John 13. He said, what I'm trying to do is get you to go to another level. He's saying, I want you to rise above the ordinary. I want you to rise above what you normally do and do something else. Listen, we can excel and we need to excel in the area of love so that when people come in, they find this a safe place. They can come in. How many of y'all ever had some baggage in your life? Anybody? You can come in, praise God. You can come in with the baggage. And listen, nobody's going to despise you because of your baggage. But what their prayer is going to be, oh, Jesus, get set them free. Jesus, lift the burden. Jesus, take care of the baggage and give them a new life in you. It's not about what others think about you. It's about what God can do in you. The church ought to be a safe place. Now, you know one of the things that we find is you know, Paul and I, we've been married a long time. And every year it gets longer. 
And it doesn't take very long for it to get longer. I mean, as we're getting older, anniversaries, boy, they just pop around. It just seems like every time we turn around, they're popping around. And you know, I love her more today than I did when we got married. I love her in a different way than I did. You see, when we got married in 1990, I thought, man, I love that girl. In fact, I stood on the platform and I said, I commit my life to you and I love you. But let me tell you something. When I think back at it, I thought, my Lord, I'm not sure I even really loved her compared to how much I love her today. And you know what happens? Now, I'm just going to be real with you. There's sometimes in our home, sometimes, I know it's going to be really hard for y'all to swallow, but there's sometimes I really make her mad. I know it seems impossible, but I do it. And I want to tell you something. There are some times, this, this will be even harder for you to believe. There's some times that she's not upset me. <laughs> she was watching me on that one. There's some times we have a difference of opinion. But you know what? When we have difference of opinion, we just work it out and we go right on. You know, I don't say to her, honey, I remember three years ago you did this, this, and this. And she doesn't say to me, you know what? I remember 10 years ago when you got out of bed on the wrong side that day and you were the nastiest old thing I've ever seen in my life. She never does that. What happens is, yes, let's just be real. In all the years we've been married, there's some times I've hurt her and offended her. There's been some times she's hurt and offended me. That's called living together in life. But you know what? We just kind of go right on, and we just keep loving each other. And you know what? Here's the bottom line. I'm probably going to do it again. I'm working this thing out in Jesus, but it ain't all out yet. And so there may be some days I may get up on the wrong side of the bed again. But you know what? She's just going to keep loving me, and I don't have any fear about it. I'm not worried. I may get cross. She's going to get sweet. You know, I may get on the wrong side of the bed. She'll get out on the right side of the bed. When I don't look so nice, she's going to look incredible. I'll tell you, she's going to be everything that's needed to be. Listen, if I can, you know why I do that? Because I love her. You know why she's patient and kind with me? Because she loves me. I have a question for you. Why can't we do that in the church? Listen, somebody, I guarantee you, if you come here long enough, you're going to run into somebody that got up on the wrong side of the bed one morning, and when you come into church, they're going to say the wrong thing to you. Listen, we are, this, this is a great group of believers. I love y'all. You are some of the kindest believers I've been around my life. And I'm, I'm not just telling you, I'm being honest with you. But how many of you know, we're not a perfect body of believers. And so there's going to come some time. You may find out there's going to be somebody. You're going to walk in there and say, my Lord, what did you do to your hair this week? <laughs> they may say, my Lord, where did you get that top to wear? Or they may say something, and it just blows you out of the water. And you know what? Listen, I've been around church long enough. I've seen people leave churches because somebody said something like that to them. Listen, you don't divorce your family because they get on the wrong side of the bed. You just keep loving them in spite of it all. I want to encourage you to love the way Christ loved. How many times have we hurt him? How many times have we disappointed him? How many times have we been ways with him? And yet he just keeps loving us. He keeps not giving up on us. He keeps being patient with us and kind. Listen, we're the body of Christ. If there's any area we ought to excel in, it ought to be in the area of love. Listen, you're going to go to work, and when you say the wrong thing, people are going to get mad at you. They're going to call you in the office. They're going to tell everybody else in the department about you. Let that never be so in the church of Jesus Christ. Let it never be that there's a group of people going out and eating lunch talking about somebody at the church. Let it never be that we have breakfast and across the breakfast table we talk about what we don't like or don't like about other people. I better step up here. <laughs> May it never be said that you could walk down the halls at Lighthouse Assembly and there's two people just talking about chewing on another believer or posting things about another believer because you know who you are. Yeah. 
let it never be said that we acted like the world. May it be said that we act like Jesus Christ. That when you come in, the body of believers loves you and that you experience something you can't get anywhere else. You can't buy it. You can't earn it. You get something here. It's free. It's marvelous. It's expressive. It's incredible. It's the love of God through believers. Here's what God wants to do, friend. God wants to love other people through you. God wants to love the other people in this church through you. You and I are like that conduit. We're like a pipe, and the love of God flows through that to reach out to somebody else. So God wants to love the person sitting in the row through you. If they're at the opposite end of the row and you kind of, you know, y'all had some words, he wants to love that person through you. Hmm. Let me tell you, that's real, folks. That's real. May we not act like the world. May we act like God's people. It's time to come to a higher standard. It's time to come to a higher place. It's time to champion the work of Christ in us. It's time that we build some champions. So men and women that excel in loving other people. Men and women that excel in putting others first. Men and women who are more concerned about serving than being served. Men and women who say, I don't care about my needs. I want to help meet somebody else's needs. Men and women will say, I'll put others first and me second. Loving as Christ loved the church. Father God, I pray this morning, Father, that we would not just be challenged in our hearts But I pray, Father, that we will be changed by your word. I pray we'll be changed, God, by your love for us. For it is with the comfort we have received from you that we comfort others. And I believe, Lord, it's with the love we have received from you that we can give to other people. Lord, I pray you'll help us. Help us, Lord. Help us because, Lord, from the preacher... All the way to the back doors, Lord, we're, we're not a perfect people. Lord, we're working this thing out. We're walking this thing out. We're living this thing out. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus. God, that you'll place your love in our hearts. God, that we can love the way you loved. Not as the world loves, but the way you love. Father, I pray today that you just speak to our hearts. And Lord, you've already been doing that. You've been changing lives in this service right now already. You've been changing lives. And I believe you're going to continue to do it. And I trust you for it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me, please? Normally at... um, at this juncture, this part of the service, I might, I might say, you know, if, if the Lord's speaking to your heart uh, about something and we would open for a time of prayer. But I want to close this morning differently. You'll find in this passage in John 13 that Jesus is talking to the disciples. He's talking to the church. He's talking to us. And he says, I'm giving you a new command. It's time to go to another level. And so this morning in closing, what I'd like to do is, if you're a part of the church, not a member, not uh, a regular attender, if you're a part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, what I'd like to invite you, because you know what, you could be a part of the church and you not attend here regularly. You might attend someplace else. That's all right. You can come and join with us as we come around the front this morning. I'd like to invite everyone who's a believer in Christ, everyone who's a part of the body of Christ, to come and join me around the front of this church. Some of you that you can't stand very long, if you want to sit in the front rows, but I'd like to invite you to come and join me. Will you come now? Everybody's a part of the body of Christ. If you're a believer in Jesus, come and stand across the front of this church. This really is a call for all of us. And if you'll just move in as close as you can, I'd like to provide as much opportunity for as many to, to gather in as they can. Just, just keep moving in. 
Just keep moving in closer and closer. What incredible, incredible, incredible group of people you are. Jesus. Just keep moving in as close as you can. I'd like to give as many the opportunity to, to be a part of what's happening. Listen, there's been times that I told you I got out on the wrong side of the bed. And you know, there's been times that I have spoken and not even realized I was doing it and I would see an expression on Paula's face. Guys, it's that look when you go, uh oh, I did it. And there's been times in knowing that that I've had to go back to her and say, honey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the things I said and how I said them. You know what that's called? It's called repentance. Repentance is not a bad thing. Actually, repentance is a very good thing. It's a freeing thing. And I don't know about you, but I'm just going to be as honest with you as I know to be. There's been times I haven't loved the people around me like Christ has loved me. There's been times I've not been what he wanted me to be. He has been so incredible to me in my life. And there's been some times I wasn't quite as incredible with others. And when that happens, I've got to say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for my attitude. Forgive me for the things I've said. Forgive me for the ways I've been. Because I want to honor you. And this morning, friends, the reason that I ask you here as the church is because, first of all, I think for things to head in the right direction, sometimes we got to say, Lord, I'm sorry for the way I've been. I'm sorry if I've been involved in conversations. I'm sorry if I've uh, been ways, if I've had attitudes that have not pleased you. I'm sorry for those things. And you know, that's something that only you can do. That's between you and him. That's between you and him. And so this morning, what we're going to do is, I just want to take a few moments. And as we pray, Lord, help me to love others. Maybe, maybe in your heart you say, you know what, Lord, I need you to forgive me for how I've been with some others. Maybe it's been a while back. Maybe it wasn't today or last week. Maybe it was six months ago. You say, Lord, I'm sorry for how I've been to the body of Christ. Then I'd like for our prayer to be this, Lord, help me to love the people around me the way you love them. God, help me to see Rodney like you see Rodney. Help me to see Dan the way you see Dan. Help me to love Leonard, Lord, the way you love Leonard. Help me to love Don the way you love Don. God, help me to be that person. And Lord, if my heart needs changed, change it so that I can love like you love. Here's what I do. I want to pray a prayer over us. But right where you're at, I'd like for you to pray in those directions. And anything else maybe the Lord is speaking to your heart about. Let's pray together. Father, in this room right now, you see us gathered together. God, we're your people. And God, we... Though forgiven, though we receive grace and mercy, Lord, there's some times in our life we don't always hit the mark. I pray you forgive us for those times. God, I pray you'll be merciful to us. I pray, God, that your grace would be sufficient for us. Help us, I pray. Father, I pray today in the name of Jesus. God, that you'll help us to love the people around us the way you do. Help us to be patient and kind. Not boastful, not proud, not envious. Help us to not keep any record of wrong. Help us to always persevere, always trust, always hope, always believe. Help us to love the way you loved us. Lord Jesus, Will you make Lighthouse Assembly a safe haven for other people? 
God, I believe in the name of Jesus. Lord, this is one of the most powerful truths that you have for us. God, I pray this church will be a hospital where the broken, the wounded, the abandoned can be healed. I pray, God, that this church would be an oasis, that it would be a place of refreshing for the tired, the weary, and the worn. I pray, God, that this church will be a place of transformation. God, to where you bring men and women in, and through the love of God and the love of this body, we see a transformation take place in their life. Because, God, you've got incredible plans for them all. God, let this be a safe haven, a place of hope and healing and restoration. God, I pray your love will always permeate this church. God, I pray when men and women pull onto the grounds, I pray they'll experience something they've never felt any other place, and it'll be your love. God, as we do ministry, help us to show the kindness and the love of God. As we reach out to those in need, help us to show the kindness and the love of God. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray you'll use us for your glory. And Father, we're here together in this closing time as your church. God, I pray you'll do it in us, the church. Because the church is not the building, but rather it's the people that fill the building. Let this be a haven of love, I pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. Before you leave, we have a, a way that we can show some expression of love um, this morning, right now, while we're here. It's through the power of prayer. I shared with you last week, uh, Sean Peters was in need of healing. Sean is still in need of healing. Um, she has been taking a very small baby steps this week. They have taken her off the paralyzing medicine. They're still keeping her sedated uh, to keep uh, the anxieties down of being on a respirator. Um, it's been small steps. Kelly has been going every day driving coming home trying to take care of Gabby and get her in bed and get her to school and turn around driving back. He's tired. He's wore out. Sean needs a miracle in her body. Would you join me? And uh, if you'll take each other, take your neighbor by the hand. And I'd like for us to pray for, for Sean and for Kelly and their family. Would you just, listen, w would you pray for them as if it was your wife your husband, your kids. Would you pray that way with me? Let's pray for them. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we just call out their names before you today. We lift Sean up before the throne of God. And we pray in the name of Jesus for healing in her body. We pray for a miracle in her lungs. God, I thank you for the baby steps. But I pray, God, you'll give us some big strides this week. I pray, God, you begin to turn things around. What the medicine couldn't do, God, you can do in a moment. I pray, God, you'll bring effectiveness to it. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, healing in her body. God, I pray you'll give her peace that passes all understanding. Anxiety will go in the name of Jesus. Fear will go in the name of Jesus. Worry in the name of Jesus will go. And I pray the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard her heart, her mind, her body, her emotions in Jesus Christ our Lord. And Father, today we pray for Kelly. You'll strengthen him. God, he's tired in body. Lord, I pray you'll renew his strength. For they that trust in the Lord, they will renew their strength. He will mount up with wings like an eagle. Run and not get weary. Walk and not faint. We speak strength to his body. We, strength, we, we speak strength to his mind. We speak strength to his soul. We speak in the name of Jesus everything he needs. God, you said that you give us everything we need for living a godly life in this world. 
I pray, God, you will supply abundantly everything they have need of. And, Lord, just wrap your arms around them. Pull them in close. Pull them in close. Lord, I believe in the power of prayer. And I believe in the persistence of prayer. And, Lord, I believe you're going to do incredible things for them. We trust you, Father, for it. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, we ask it all in Jesus' name. And now, may the Lord our God fill our hearts with his love. May he bless this church with the spirit of love. May love permeate the halls of this place. May the love of God be evident when people pull on the grounds of this church. May the reputation of this body of believers be the love of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. May you be blessed today. May you be strengthened by his encouragement. And may the joy of the Lord always be your strength. We love you. We thank God for you. And we pray his very best to be poured out in your life. God bless you. Have a great day. May the joy of the Lord be your strength. God bless.